Hello everyone, this is Deepak Singhal. I welcome you all to the channel of Vidya Guru. So this is my first video for the April month and year. If you are my listeners for the first time, if you have come to the channel for getting the important news related to April month current affair, and if you have not subscribed the channel, then it is just my request, humble request to kindly subscribe it and also share it with your friends who are also preparing for the same examination as you guys. So in this April month video, I'll be talking about some of the most important current highlights like Finland becoming the member of NATO alliance, NATO that alliance, which was formed after the cold war in order to, I would say in, or in order to stop the advancement of uh, USSR means uh, now it is Russia. Now India justice report in which Karnataka has stopped Skyroot aerospace, which is first Indian, I would say startup company who have launched the first rocket means it, it, it has become the first private company in India to launch a rocket. Then we have e Ravikulam National Park, which is getting a Farnarium, sorry, a, a, Farna, a Farnarium. Farnarium, what is that? Actually, it is a kind of a biodiversity park. The Farnarium is a kind of a biodiversity park in which, or it, it is a kind of a botanical garden in which you showcase a variety of ferns, a variety of species of ferns, means how they grow and everything. And India and Malaysia pact in which now the both countries have agreed to settle their trade in Indian rupee. And the last one is India uh, International Mine Awareness Day. So all these current will be covered by me in this session. So let's begin the session. The very first current affair, it is about Finland. The NATO alliance uh, used to contain 30 members as of now, but now Finland has become the very recent 31st member of the NATO alliance. However, Finland and Sweden both have applied for the NATO membership, but the Sweden membership was rejected by Turkey. The, the, the new name for Turkey is Turkey and Hungary. They have some problems with each other. The most important thing is that you can only become a member of NATO only if all the 30 members agree to make you. But if all the 30 members are not agreeing or if they have not agreed to make you a member in that condition, you cannot be make a member or you cannot be or you cannot become a member of this prestigious membership, this prestigious organization, which stands for NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The headquarters of NATO, it is in Brussels, Belgium. The most important thing about NATO is that it was established actually in the post, uh, I would say, Second World War period when the Cold War uh, era started and this alliance the NATO alliance was actually established in order to uh, I would say in order to check the advancement of USSR when it was not broken so it was actually founded by America European Union and some of the other members who wanted to make a organization like NATO and the safeguard means objective was to safeguard the freedom and security of all its members by political and military means yes it is true even if a war on any member of NATO is considered a war on all the members of NATO. So this organization was established on 4th of April 1949 and now Finland has become a member of it. Why Finland? Because of increasing threats from Russian side to attack Finland also after Ukraine. Because if you closely watch the map of Russia and Ukraine, Russia, sorry, Russia and Finland, they shared the border. So Finland in that sense was very much afraid that it should not means the means uh, something like Ukraine should not happen to Finland. So something about the NATO, the founding members are United States, Canada, and the 10 European countries, including Belgium, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, and United Kingdom. Whereas the NATO security general is Mr. Jens Stoltenberg, sorry, Stolten, Stoltenberg, Prime Minister of Finland is Sana Marin, capital is Helsinki and the currency is Euro. Heading forward to next current affair. It is Chhattisgarh's Nagri Dubraj. Nagri Dubraj rice has got the geographical indication tag. Now the question comes. So what is GI tag? Generally GI tag is that tag. Once it is given, once it is given, it actually protects that product or any company or person cannot sell that product under that name. So it is a kind of a intellectual property right because in paris convention of 2015 ip right was talked about so it is a part of intellectual property rights under paris convention 
in order to protect your ip rights government of india came up with a gi tax and this gi tax the first gi tax was awarded to the darjeeling tea and this is the reason why any company or any person cannot sell the tea directly with the title of darjeeling tea so benefits are it provides some legal protection to the product it prevents unauthorized use of gi tags and validity is for 10 years the most important thing is that it also uh, it also makes it very much clear in order means it also makes it very easy for the customer to go for quality because if everyone will start using the name darjeeling tea how would you come to know that which is the real darjeeling tea i think the point is very clear so in order to point out that which is real means what is real and what uh, uh, means which product is real and which product is fake that gi indication plays a very great role so very recently chatisgarh nagri dubraj rice has got the geographical indication tag apart from it what is nagri dubraj nagri dubraj is a fragrant rice from chatisgarh and this is the reason why the geographical indication tag has been given to it the morena and the reva mango both are in madhya pradesh have also been given the gi tag so nagri dubraj means origin of nagri dubraj is believed to be from shiringi rishi sorry shiringi rishi ashram area of sihawa and its reference is also found in valmiki's ramayana this is the reason why nagri dubraj is a very great quality of rice after that what is gi tag all these are the things though i have already covered it came into enforcement on 15th of september 2003 but it actually protects what the intellectual property right which was signed during paris convention so abbreviation gi stands for geographical indication and it is generally given to that quality that product which is originally grown from that area in order to protect its origination quality and no person or company can sell the product under the same name india has more than 300 gi tag as of now and the rules and regulations of gi are governed by world trade organization agreement on the trade related aspects of ip rights at the international level this is very very important means who governs the law of gi very important heading forward to next current affair it is about india justice report 2022 in which karnataka has stopped and uh, means what is that report according to india justice report 2022 which has been released in new delhi on 4th of april karnataka has stopped the list of states and union territories in providing access to justice so this report generally reads the most important thing that how much access you have got to justice they have the four parameters like police judiciary prisons and the legal aid in all these things karnataka has stopped the union territories and states karnataka has ranked first among the 18 large and the medium sized states with a population of over 1 crore in terms of delivery of justice whereas second position is tamil nadu third is telangana and uttar pradesh is at the 18th position at the bottomest level whereas among the small states sikkim has stopped the list of seven small states followed by arunachal at the second number and goa is at the most bottomest level yes goa india justice report who launches it tata trust this report is launched by tata trust this is the third edition of this report the first being launched in 2019 my guys heading forward to next important current affair this is about finally a private company skyroot aerospace who has test fired a 3d printed cryogenic engine it looks like that now the question comes sir what is the advantage of cryogenic engine my dear the cryogenic engines are those engines which can carry heavy load to the space and if you all remember very soon india is going to send astronauts in the space under the mission gagan yaan in which for the first time we guys will be sending some astronauts to the space and the astronauts have been given the name gagan yatris and all this can be possible only when you have cryogenic engine with you so this aerospace company has test fired a 3d printed dhavan second engine for the duration of 200 seconds on 4th of april and it was not the first uh, test fire of this engine 
though this company has already tested Dhawan 1 engine back in November 2021. And the achievement comes after the November 2022 when the company also launched Vikram S. Vikram S engine, which has made this company the first Indian private company to send a rocket into the space. So this engine is how much it is important. This is very, very much important whenever it comes to carry some heavy load because they have the cryogenic engine have the higher load capacity. Heading forward to the most important things about Skyroot Aerospace. It is a space tech startup, guys. And why it was found? It was just found to give you some low cost launch solutions in order to reach the space in the shortest time possible. The startup has made three vehicles so far, Vikram 1, Vikram 2, Vikram 3, which can carry the payloads ranging from 200 to 700 kg to the low earth orbit. Guys, we'll be taking a separate class over the missile technology, the rocket science, and we'll also be telling you that there are three kinds of orbits around earth. Starting from low earth orbit, then we have medium earth orbit. And the third one is the higher, sorry, the geostationary earth orbit means Leo, Mio and Geo. Currently, the team of aerospace is uh, testing a 3D printing liquid propellant engine and a fully composite and high performance solid rocket motor. Whereas the headquarters of Skyroot Aerospace is in Hyderabad, Telangana, heading forward to next important current affair. Banarasi Pan. Banarasi Pan also has got the GI tag. It is among the four items to got this special geographical indication tag. Apart from Banarasi Pan, three other items from Varanasi region also got the GI tag like Banarasi Langra Mango, Ramnagar Bhanta, which is a kind of a brinjal, uh, Adam Chini Rice. All of these have received the GI tag. Whereas the Banarasi Pan is a popular mouth freshener made from beetle leaves, beetle nut, slaked lime, and many other ingredients. Even this Banarsi Pan is so famous that Amitabh Bachchan also featured a song over it. The inclusion of these four products takes the total number of GI tag from the Kashi region. Kashi is the name also used for Varanasi from the Kashi region alone to 22, which highlights the cultural and the culinary rich heritage of the Kashi Varanasi region. This is how the Banarasi Pan looks like. Now we have the next important news. NASA has announced the four member team of astronauts to travel to the moon. And these four members are Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover. And Victor Glover is the first black man. I would say first black astronaut to be sent after 50 years gap. Jeremy Hansen and Madam Christina Cooch. Whereas the Christina Cooch will become the first woman to be sent to the moon after the gap of 50 years. And my dear, we also have covered it, it like in our daily sessions where I told you that NASA is also planning in order to revive the Apollo series. NASA started the Apollo series when the NASA started sending some astronauts to moon. And when the craze went out, NASA discontinued the Apollo series. And now NASA is trying to revive the Apollo series with a new name called Artemis. So these four astronauts will be sent to the moon next year under Artemis II. For the first time in five decades, means 50 years, NASA announced the team of four astronauts for its human space flight mission to the moon. They will fly around the moon for around 10 days next year. Whereas the Reed Wiseman, means first time a woman astronaut, Christina Cooch will be sent to the moon. He is Victor uh, Glover, means the black astronaut. So ranging from your right, sorry, from your left to right, we have the pilot Victor Glover, means this one. Then we have the commander, right, uh, sorry, Reed Wiseman. Then we have the specialist Jeremy Hansen and Madam Christina Cooch. Together, they will become the first people to fly to the moon in more than 50 years. Then we have the, something about the Artemis second mission. The Artemis one mission will allow NASA to test the foundation of its latest human space exploration capabilities means whether your spacecraft your space flight is fit for that or not so this includes space launch system rocket the orion spacecraft and all the associated ground systems whereas the nasa is concerned this stands for national aeronautics and space administration headquartered in washington dc and the administrator of nasa is mr bill nelson heading forward to the next important current affair bahrain 
I'm talking about a Bahrain, which is a small island country in the Gulf of Persian. This is the small island country. If you can see in the map, I have got the map for you guys. This island country is what we call Bahrain. So now what they have done, the Bahrain has recently launched a golden license. What is the golden license? My dear, this license is generally launched to encourage the investment and job creation in the country. It aims to provide some streamlined services and benefits to local and foreign businesses. The golden license offer various benefits, including priority land allotment for investment, infrastructure services, utilities, streamlined access to government services and whatnot. So this initiative was launched by Bahrain cabinet chaired by Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince and the Prime Minister of Bahrain to attract the local and the international investment to create the job opportunities. And we all know that this region, especially the South means this Middle Asia region, the Middle East is famous for oil exploration. Whereas all the other big, big economies, including your UAE, Qatar, Oman, all of these other developed nations just by selling the oil. So why not Bahrain? So this way, in order to become a developed, in order to become a country for creating the job opportunities, they have got the golden license. So Bahrain golden license to make large scale investments possible in Bahrain. It is a island country located in Western Asia. We have already seen it is located towards West of India. Capital of Bahrain is Manama, which serves as the commercial and financial center of the country. Majority of the population is Muslim with Sunni and Shia Muslims being the largest groups. Then we have the next important current affair. It is MF Hydra, which is world's first liquid hydrogen ferry. Yes. Hydrogen ferry means powered by hydrogen as a fuel. So vessel named MF Hydra is a hybrid and uses both batteries and liquid hydrogen as fuel. The Norwegian Maritime Authority granted approval to operate this yacht. And in this way, this yacht has become the world's first ferry to run on hydrogen liquid fuel. My dear, if hydrogen fuel is not controlled, if hydrogen fuel is not managed well, that this can become a mini bomb which can cause maximum destruction. Hydrogen is not a safe fuel, my dear, but it is the clean fuel. So hydrogen fuel cell produce only clean water as a byproduct, making them super environment friendly, which is uh, means even super friendly, even uh, when I compare it with the batteries. So this is how this MF Hydra means, which is powered by hydrogen fuel uh, looks like it is from Norway, Norwegian. MF Hydra was to be delivered in 2021 and measures about 82.4 meters with passenger capacity of around 300 and a capacity to carry 80 vehicles. It uses 200 kilowatt of fuel cells, two, two, or sorry, two 440 kilowatt of generators, two shuttle thrusters to reach a speed of nine knots, which is good enough. And the hydrogen system was provided to this MF Hydra by Linde Engineering Company. The capital of Norway is Oslo, currency is Norwegian Korone, whereas the king is Harad V of Norway. Heading forward to next important current affair. It is talking about my dear Farnarium and we have already discussed what do we know or what do we understand something about the Farnarium. It is a kind of a botanical garden in which you showcase that how ferns are grown, what are the varieties of fern? So what are ferns? So ferns are nothing but they actually grow naturally in a soilless environment by absorbing the water and nutrients from trees, making the park an ideal location for fernarium. In this way, you will able to teach the visitors about the biodiversity of the park, about the flora of the park in a unique way. So the uh, Iraviculum National Park in Munnar, Kerala has the new attraction. And this is the India's first uh, Farnarium uh, collection set up in a hill station. This is how the uh, E. Ravikulam National Park, uh, the Farnarium looks like. Uh, whereas some other national parks in Kerala are Anamudi, E. Ravikulam, the Karim Puza, the Mathi Ketan, the Pampadadam, Periyar, and the Silent Valley National Park. Then we have the next important current affair. It is about India and Malaysia. My dear, if any country agrees, like if India and Malaysia, they have signed the pact that whenever the Malaysia will buy anything, what is the pact? Whenever the Malaysia will import anything from India, then the payment for the import will be sent in Indian rupee. 
So in order to make the transactions possible in your currency, one of the banks of Malaysia, one of the banks of Malaysia will visit India. And that Malaysian bank, again, I'm saying one of the bank of Malaysia will visit India. And that Malaysian bank is not opening a branch in India, but that Malaysian bank will, will open an account. Will open an account like the customers open account with bank. They will open an account with Indian bank. And if any foreigner bank opens an account with Indian bank, such an account is called Vostro accounts. And these accounts will make the transactions in rupee to be settled easy. And if our bank will go outside and open uh, its account with any foreign bank, then those accounts are called Vostro accounts. So we, sorry, uh, those accounts are called Nostro accounts. So we have the Vostro accounts. If any foreign bank will visit India for opening the account, it is called Vostro. If we go foreign and open the account with any foreign bank, that, that bank account is called Nostro. So the Kuala Lumpur based International Bank of Malaysia visited India and opened a special Vostro account with the Union Bank of India in order to make the Indian rupee trade possible. And we should be aware of this that back in uh, the month, like back in the last year, our Reserve Bank of India notified that India is now keen on making Indian rupee a global currency. So various people started thinking and questioning about, sir, are we challenging, uh, are we challenging the hegemony of dollar? Sir, is it actually true that are we challenging the dollar hegemony? Yes, beta. Now we are in the position to challenge that dollar's hegemony. You know why? Because when the Russia and Ukraine war started, inflation shoot up. The prices of crude oil went up. The dollar evaluated. Our rupee devaluated. And because of it, our forex reserve started emptying. War was started between you guys. Then why should we suffer because of that? So we said Ki we will not trade in uh, dollar anymore. We are ready to trade in Indian rupee. And now you guys will ask me, sir, why would the world listen us? But we are the most populous country in the world. And the most important thing is not the population, but the most important thing is the market that we have. We have the demand in India. So this step has been taken only after the decision of the RBI. RBI was talking about this decision right from 2016, but it was implemented again in 2021. Heading forward to next important, what is Vostro account? Vostro is a Latin word meaning your, hence Vostro account means your account. When any foreign bank opens an account, with our bank, those accounts are called Vostro accounts. So the Prime Minister of Malaysia is Anwar Ibrahim. Capital is Kuala Lumpur. The currency is Malaysian Ringgit. Official language is Malay. And the religion is Islam. Heading forward to the next important current affair. It is about the Prime Minister Modi's invitation to the France for the Bastille Day. Now the question comes, sir, what is Bastille Day? If you all remember about the French Revolution, then you must be uh, very much aware with that, that the French Revolution started when a fort where the French monarch used to live, Bastille, was stormed by a group of people. So this is how the Bastille looked like. So when the people stormed this Bastille palace, the French Revolution started. So what is Bastille for uh, the fort? It is generally considered that it was a fortress in Paris which is known as Bastille Palace. And it is it was very much important for the internal conflicts of France. And it was actually not a palace where the, sorry, it was not a palace where the king used to live, but this Bastille was actually the prison. This Bastille was actually the state prison. And when this state prison was demolished by a group of people on 14th of July, this date is considered as the date for starting the French Revolution. The French Revolution overthrew the monarchy and made France a republic. And this day, 14th July, is the reason why it is celebrated as the National Day of France. And why it was stormed, why it was demolished, we all know the people were not happy with monarchy. And when it was demolished, it was demolished on 14th of July, though the year is not mentioned, but let me mention 1789. This is the date when this Bastille fort or this Bastille prison was demolished by a group of people. 
in france language or in french it is known as le fete national or le 14th juliet the day is celebrated with fireworks and parades because they, this day set the example that monarchy is good for nothing and even in our preamble the word like liberty equality fraternity these three words we have got from french revolution this is how our french uh, means bastille day was uh, means participated by our prime minister narendra modi in such a style what is bastille day so it was on this bastille day uh, means on 14th july a bastille day parade is celebrated which is a french military parade held on the morning of 14th july each year in paris since 1880 onwards it is one of the oldest regular military parades in the world and this bastille fort this bastille prison uh, it fell on 14th july 1789 after which the french revolution began and the three ideals of french revolution are liberty equality and fraternity it is generally believed that after the french revolution these ideals became so much strong that other european world means other european countries also started facing some protest from the people which were targeting at overthrow of monarchy and making the country a republican country heading forward to the next important current affair it is a 10th edition of india sri lanka bilateral maritime exercise called slinex 2023 which has already began on 3rd of april it began in sri lanka and colombo and the exercise is being conducted in two phases of 3 days each the harbor phase and the sea phase Indian navy is being represented by INS Kiltan and Savitri while the Sri Lankan navy is represented by SLNS Vijayabahu and Samudra that this is the ninth edition of this exercise which was concluded means this is the 10th edition by the way whereas the ninth edition of this exercise was concluded last year on 10th of march in india in visakhapatnam bay of bengal and now it is being happening in colombo uh, sri lanka this is the 10th edition of sinex 2023 next important current affair it is about vice admiral s j singh being appointed as the new vice chief of the indian navy on 1st of april 2023 who is uh, uh, s j singh he stands for sanjay jasjeet uh, singh uh, who is a distinguished naval officer and a graduate of national defense academy pune his contribution to the navy has been recognized with nau sena medal in 2009 and the ati vishisht seva medal in 2020 the indian navy as far as this is concerned was established uh, on 26th of january 1950 on the lines of chhatrapati maharaj shivaji and the current chief of the naval staff is admiral r hari kumar this is the admiral s j singh and the chief of indian navy hari kumar shaking hands with each other then we have the sprinter lashinda dimus was awarded as the olympic gold medal after a decade more than a decade after 2012 london games lashinda dimus a sprinter from us was awarded an olympic gold medal at the age of 40 yes this was the london olympics 2012 which held in london uk from 27th of july till 12th of august 2012 over 10000 athletes from 204 national olympic committee participated in this olympics united states topped the medal table with 104 medals including 46 gold where china finished second with 88 medals including 38 gold and the great britain finished third with 65 medals in total including 29 gold then we have the next important current affair to be odisha day or it is also celebrated as utkal day if you are very good in geography then you must be getting this that our eastern coastal plains are means the coastal plains of odisha are also called as utkal coast the odisha coast is also called as utkal coast and the odisha day celebrated on 1st of april because on the 1st of april back in 1936 the odisha was founded so it is a kind of a foundation day for odisha which is the 88th foundation day of this state capital of odisha is bhubaneswar governor is ganesh ganeshi lal and the chief minister is mr navni navneen sorry navin patnaik then we have the next important current affair about the foundation day of rbi yes rbi was also founded on 1st of april back in 1935 and it was nationalized means uh, the government has bought rbi or the government it was uh, put under government sector on 1st of july 1949 nationalization means we are 50% more than 50% share 
is uh, with government of India. So the central office of RBI was initially established in Kolkata, but it was transferred to Mumbai 1937. And now, since 1937, the headquarter of RBI is still in Mumbai. So on 1st of April, every year, the Foundation Day is celebrated. Directors, there are directors who are appointed for four-year term. First governor of RBI was Mr. Uh, Osborne Smith, whereas the first Indian governor was C.D. Deshmukh. And the only prime minister to become the governor of RBI is Manmohan Singh. The first women deputy governor is K.G. Udeshi. Very important. Then we have the next important current affair. It is about a new book called Gandhi, Siyasat or Sampraday. Written by Mr. Piyush Babele. This is a new Hindi book titled Gandhi, Siyasat or Communalism. Has been authored by journalist turned author Piyush Babele. Who currently heads the media department of MP Congress. The book quotes from Dr. Ambedkar's book Pakistan or the Partition of India and other sources. To refer to the events leading up to the Partition of India in 1947. What is this book? This book aims to break the myth spread by Hindu right wing that Mahatma Gandhi was responsible for the partition. No, yaar, he was not. Mahatma Gandhi was not responsible for the partition where he though always wanted the rights to stop down. He, he did his best in order to stop the rights. And when the partition was announced, the most unhappy man in India who was not happy with that was Mahatma Gandhi. The book is published by New Delhi-based Genuine Publications and Media Private Limited. Again, very important. Something about MP. It was established on 1st of November 1956. So 1st of November is the foundation day of MP. Capital is Bhopal. Chief Minister is Shivraj Singh Chauhan. Official animal is Bara Singha. And the river is Narmada River. And the official tree is Banyan Tree. Heading forward to next important current affair. It is about Sudha Shiva Kumar appointed as the national president of Fiki Ladies Organization. FLO. Sudha Shiv Kumar has been appointed as a 40th national president of FIKI uh, ladies organization which is a women led and women focused business chamber from Southeast Asia. Who is she? She is an investment banker and lawyer and his appointment was an, uh, announced on 3rd of April. As national president Shiv Kumar's main focus will be on empowering the women by creating an enabling environment. Then we have the next important current affair. It is about indigenous anti-tank guided missile Amoga-3 has been tested successfully. Yes, the Bharat Dynamics has successfully conducted a field firing test of third generation anti-tank guided portable missile Amoga-3. Amoga-3 missile has been developed indigenously under the integrated guided missile development program which was started by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, where the five missiles were started by him. Patna, which stands for Patna, P stands for Prithvi, A stands for Agni, T stands for Trishul, N stands for Nag, and A stands for Akash. So it is under the same program, Amoga-3 has been developed. It is a third generation fire and forget anti-tank guided missile used against the tanks. Amoga-3, it has been tested successfully. Bharat Dynamics, founded in 1970, headquarters in Hyderabad, Chairman and MD is Mr. Siddharth Mishra. Heading forward to the next important current, it is the International Mine Awareness Day celebrated every year on 4th of April, whereas the theme for this year is Mine Action Cannot Wait. It was first celebrated in 2006 by the United Nations General Assembly and something about the United Nations Mine Action Service, which is headquartered in New York, founded in October 1997, and the head is Eileen Cohen. Then we have the last news, Sorry, last but not the least because it is not over yet. National Maritime Day, 5th of April, celebrated as National Maritime Day, which begins actually the celebration begins on 30th March and it ends on 5th of April. And this year marks the 60th anniversary of the National Maritime Day. What is the theme? Theme is Shipping May Amrit Kal, which means golden era in shipping. The World Maritime Day is observed, my dear, on 29th of September, whereas the National Maritime Day is on 5th of April. Again, this is how the National Maritime Day was celebrated and this is the end of today's bulletin. So guys, if you have liked the session, if you have liked the detail shared by me, then kindly like the session. Also subscribe the channel means towards your right bottom, the bottom right hand side, you will find a subscribe button and when you will subscribe the channel, the color of the button will change. I will not get any benefit, but the only thing which I will get is that whenever I'll post a video, it will reach to my listeners on the spot. 
So if you have liked the session, if you if you like all the details, kindly boost the morale by subscribing the channel in heavy quantities, making the video viral, and also share this with your friends who are preparing for the same examination like SSC, IBPS, banking, any exam. For any kind of exam, these current affairs will do a lot of help. And with these, you are not even required to read any newspapers. We'll take care of that. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next session very soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.